When Nikon introduced the 17 to 28 millimeter f2.8 Z mount lens, I was immediately interested in how it would compare to the Nikon Z 14 to 24 millimeter f2.8 lens with regards to nightscapes and astrophotography. Hello everybody, I'm Will Cheney. In this video, I'm gonna be comparing the Nikon Z mount 17 to 28 millimeter f2.8 lens to the Nikon Z 14 to 24 millimeter f2.8 lens with regards to astrophotography and nightscapes. We'll take a look at the specs and how they differ between the two lenses. And then I'll take a look at several test images that I've taken both with the 17 to 28 millimeter and the 14 to 24, and also some direct comparison images looking at similar sets. And then at the end of this video, I'll take a look at several different alternative options to these two lenses. So if you're trying to decide between either of these two lenses, hopefully this video will help you make up your mind and make sure that you get the lens that fits your needs. Let's jump over to the specs on these two lenses. The 17-28mm comes in at a price tag of $1,199, and the Nikon Z 14-24 comes in at a substantially higher price tag of $2,499, which actually is about $100 up in price from where it has been recently. Uh, the next thing that we'll take a look at on these, um, the 17 to 28 millimeter, there you go, that's your focal length on this one, um, and the 14 to 24, that's going to be your other difference between it. So the 14 to 24 can go a little bit wider whenever you're wanting to get um, those wider, more expansive shots of the Milky Way, and the 17 to 28, you're going to be a little limited on how wide you can go with the shots. And the next thing that I'll mention is they're both full frame lenses and are classified as zoom because of the fact that their focal lengths can be adjusted. Next up with both of these lenses, they have a maximum aperture of f2.8, so they're both gonna be great at getting a lot of light into your sensor. And additionally, with that um, f2.8, the 17 to 28 millimeter will have a minimum focal distance of seven and a half inches, and the 14 to 24 is gonna have a minimum focus distance of 11 inches. So just a slight difference there. The next thing that we'll take a look at between these two lenses is what's on the outside of them. Um, so looking here at the 14 to 24, um, you'll notice there are three pretty big rings on here uh, for adjusting different settings. Um, this one is your focal length setting. Um, this one you can use for your uh, adjusting your focus. And then you've also got one down here that you can use for your aperture. And these can actually be programmed to do different things, but that's just stock out of the box the way that they come. Um, you'll also have a display screen here that'll help you uh, know what focus distance that you're at. And then you'll have a couple of buttons here, one of which will turn on the display and the other one you can program to let it do whatever it is that you want it to do. Additionally, you also get a switch on here to switch between your autofocus and manual focus, which I find really useful for astrophotography. The next thing that we'll look at here on the 17 to 28, you'll get your focal adjustment ring here. Um, this one is it's pretty big, so it's pretty easy to always know which one you're going to and know that you're going to the correct one. Um, and then you've also got your ring here for adjusting focus. Uh, now, one thing that you'll notice though, it is missing the automatic and manual focus switch here, which for me is a little bit of a bummer for astrophotography and nightscapes, where I like to always be in manual mode. And the only way you can get into a true manual mode with this lens is by going into your settings in the camera and setting it up that way. The next thing to note between these two lenses is the weight. Uh, this one, the 17 to 28 comes in at 0.99 pounds. So roughly one pound and the 14 to 24 comes in at 1.4 pounds so substantially heavier i mean you can also notice here that it's quite a bit larger as well um, the 17 to 28 has a three inch diameter and is four inches long and the 14 to 24 has a three and a half inch diameter and is five inches long so again not only larger in weight but also in the overall dimensions um, the next thing that we'll look at um, the filter threads on these, the 17 to 28 millimeter lens has a 67 millimeter filter thread on it. Um, and the 14 to 24 here is a little odd in the way that this one works. So you actually have to get rid of the normal lens hood. Um, so you pop that one off and then you have to go put this massive thing on it um, to be able to put a filter on it. So now we've just considerably increased the size of the lens. 
Um, and within this lens hood, um, there's a thread here for a 112 millimeter uh, threaded filter. So that's a pretty massive filter and your filters are gonna be way cheaper on the 67 millimeter if you're needing to put filters on your lenses. Up next, we'll walk through a few comparison images that I took with both lenses. Um, and then also look at some individual shots that I've gotten from each camera uh, so you can get a feel for what uh, type of images that you can go capture with these lenses. But first, if you like this video so far, please be sure and hit the like button down below. Also subscribe if you want to keep seeing content like this pop up in your feed. Um, if you're kind of at the point right now just based off the specs and you don't know whether one of these lenses would be better for you or not, be sure to stick around. Be sure to check out the lensrentals.com affiliate link down below if you want to try the lens out. Uh, and give it, go take some test shots with it before you decide to drop the money on one of these two lenses. And with that, let's get back to the review. So let's jump in now and take a look at a couple of the test photos that I've taken. This first one is with the Nikon Z 17 to 28 millimeter lens shot on the uh, Z7 II. And what we'll look at here is just looking out here in the corners, looking for star trailing, anything weird going on in the stars. Uh, I would ignore this planet here. Um, as you'll see when we get to the 14 to 24 millimeter images that you're gonna get the exact same thing just because that planet was so bright. So um, overall, this looks really good especially when you think about the price point for this lens. Uh, when we zoom in here to the middle, the stars are really pinpoint sharp. Uh, when we move over to the 14 to 24 millimeter, again, out here in the corner, uh, you do get a little bit of uh, trailing here, just like you did on the other one. It's really, it's really small. Um, this planet over here looks just about the same. No surprise there. And here in the middle, your stars once again are pinpoint sharp. So between these two lenses, it's really surprising to me um, just how well the 17 to 28 millimeter performs. Um, and I think these two images highlight that. When we go look at the 14 to 24, uh, one of the things that I wanted to look at, and you'll notice almost the exact same thing over on the 17 to 28 millimeter, and it's really expected. And that's as you go from f2.8 up to f3.5, uh, your corners get a little bit brighter as you move up in that f-stop number. So here it is at f2.8. Uh, you can see there's a little bit of vignetting going on out here in the corners. You go over to 3.2, it gets a little brighter, and then um, it's almost gone at f3.5. So when we go switch over here to the 17 to 28 millimeter lens, again, you're gonna notice the exact same progression as I go through these three images. So here we are with the f2.8 f3.2 and then f3.5 so like i said that's expected you're not going to have uh, perfect uh, no vignetting when you're at f2.8 uh, so there is an advantage there to going to like an f3.2 or an f3.5 but in terms of comparing these two lenses it's almost exactly the same uh, one thing here if you haven't watched my other video on the 17 to 28 millimeter lens uh, just something that I threw out there. One of the things that I went out and tested was just how this lens performs with uh, wide field um, astrophotography. So I didn't have the Milky Way core to go get um, some of the shots that you typically think of with Nightscape. So I wanted to play around with this. Um, I'm not an expert. Uh, this is really one of the first uh, wide field shots that I've ever taken. Um, overall, I'm happy with it for myself, but I know I've got a lot of learning to do, so just please take that um, into account. And if you've got any suggestions on what I could do to improve the photo, I'd love to hear those down in the comments. Uh, but overall, um, this is with several hours of uh, tracking. Um, I'm happy with it. I think the lens performs really well when paired with a Z7 II. This is kind of just to give an idea of what I was planning on doing with that photo. Again, still a lot of editing that I've got to do. Um, I feel like this is kind of crunchy in this area. That's my editing, not a fault of the lens, but just giving another idea of what you could do with this lens. Next thing, uh, just looking at star trails, I felt like it performed well for this. Star trails aren't something that I do a lot of, but I thought it was worth trying out with this lens just to show it. And then the last thing that I want to jump into is just the difference that you'll see between uh, having 14 millimeters and having 17 millimeters. So uh, 14 millimeters is going to allow you to get a little bit wider shot. Um, I personally think that this particular photo here that I would not have been able to take this with the 17 to 28 millimeter, at least with the way that I have it framed here. I think the 14 millimeters allows you to a little over exaggerate your foreground 
and the 17 millimeters is going to limit you a little bit in that so with this exact setup you know i would think the 17 you're going to cut off somewhere in this area and then probably somewhere up in this area so you'll lose a little bit of the milky way and a little bit of your foreground and i think that would have done an injustice on this photo where i was trying to capture this dinosaur footprint the next photo again another one here at 14 to 24 uh, there is a chance I probably could have shot this one at 17 millimeters just due to the size of this track and being able to place it somewhere. Uh, but I do think, again, it highlights, I think, the main difference between these two lenses, depending on what you want to shoot. I think the big difference is, do you want that extra 14 millimeters over the 17? And to you, is that worth an additional uh, thou roughly $1,000? So that's a call that you'll have to make for yourself. Looking at the alternative lenses that you could potentially purchase in comparison to these two, a couple of ones that I would look at from Nikon. Uh, if you're looking at their Z-mount line, I would take a look at the 20 millimeter f1.8 lens. It comes out at a roughly equivalent price point to the 17 to 28 millimeter. Uh, your big downer though is you're gonna lose that ability to change your focal length out in the field. Um, however, you will make that up with the f1.8 aperture, so you'll be able to get in more light and you may find that more useful than having an adjustable focal length. If you're wanting to look for something a little cheaper than these two lenses, I would highly recommend looking at the Rokinon uh, 14 millimeter lineup. Uh, they do have a Z-mount version. Um, I can tell you that the glass is gonna be just a little less in quality because you are looking at a much cheaper lens. However, if you're just getting into astrophotography and nightscapes for the first time and you need something to just get you into it, I think it's a great lens. I started off with their F-mount lens and it definitely made me realize how much I enjoyed that aspect aspect of photography. And I definitely think it was worth having that lens in my bag for the first two years of my uh, nightscape and astrophotography journey. And then finally, the other lenses that I would look at would be the Sigma F-mount um, lenses. They have a 14 millimeter and also a 20 millimeter prime. Um, they're both fantastic lenses. Um, the only downside, if you're using a Z-series camera, you are now going to have to use the, uh, the F to Z mount. And, and for me, that was just one more thing to have to carry in the bag. Um, personally, I'll be a lot more interested in Sigma once they come out with uh, Z-mount lenses. Uh, but those would be ones that I would highly recommend taking a look at as they may fit better in your budget and they're also going to have uh, larger maximum apertures and still hit the wide angle focal lengths that you need for astrophotography. Wrapping this video up, I would definitely say for most people it may come down to a price concern and I can tell you that just based off of the quality of the lenses, I don't think you're going to steer yourself wrong going with the 17 to 28 millimeter. I personally am very happy that I decided to go with the 14 to 24 millimeter several years ago. Um, I do think it would have been a tough call for me to go between the 17 to 28 and the 14 to 24 just from a price perspective, but I really enjoy getting those wider, more expansive 14 millimeter shots. At this point, I really think it just comes down to you and what fits your needs. And I hope that this video has been helpful for you to make that decision. Again, if you're interested in trying one of these lenses out, be sure to check out my affiliate link down below from lensrentals.com. That'll give you a really good feel for testing out which one of these lenses that you like better. Additionally, down in the comments, I'd love to hear from you from what you decide to go with and why you made that decision. And please, while you're here, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. As always, I appreciate your time and watching the video and I'll see you in the next one.